me amped, my guy, to be here. Thank you. That's cool. Awesome, man. Well, I want to get into some of the stuff we're talking about because you're 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 helping people learn to invest, learn to retire, learn to create passive income, all this kind of good stuff. And you're doing some different stuff that than certain people have been doing. But let's start out with like your background. How'd you get to kind of where you're at today in a three minute uh, little bio, and then and then we'll jump into the cool stuff. Totally, man. So the fun story I love to tell people is the start off came from the movie Forrest Gump. I was six years old, <laughs> 1994, Forrest Gump on the movie says he no longer has to worry about money ever again because him and Lieutenant Dan invested into a fruit company. Mm. I didn't know what the word investing meant. I didn't know what a fruit company was. So I asked my dad, he told me all about Apple computers and the stock market and how it works. And obviously I was, you know, we were extremely poor growing up in deep, deep South Georgia, 30 minutes south of where they filmed Deliverance. So anyway, I begged him, begged him <laughs> to south. buy some shares. Yes, yeah, the South, yeah. man. <laughs> begged him to buy some shares. Um, he said, yes. You know, he said, listen, if you bring me some money, I'll, I'll match it dollar for dollar and I'll buy some shares. So I picked blackberries, sold them door to door, um, made 1500 bucks in the summer of 1994. A bunch of old ladies essentially just give me $10 because that was cute. And took that money. He borrowed money from my uncle. That was three thousand dollars we bought of Apple in nineteen ninety four. I sold in two thousand for twelve grand, which was a thirty four million dollar mistake. Um, <laughs> but I was hooked, man. I mean, he gave me twelve thousand dollars as a twelve year old. I'm like, this is it. That's all I want to do. So I went to college, yep. got a finance degree. Obviously, learned everything about assets, investing, stock market, day trading from college. That's sarcasm. And uh, mm -hmm. so le like <laughs> left Facebook, college, right? They teach you everything you need to know. <laughs> That's it. Left, left college uh, essentially with a worthless piece of paper and studied my face off using books, webinars, YouTube, educational seminars. And uh, I've been attacking this stuff as aggressively as any person will do anything since the age of 20. So for the last 14 nice. years. All right. So what's some of the more creative stuff you've done? You've already gave me one right before we hit the record button. So let's, let's, let's get into it. Yeah, we can, we definitely can talk about that. I mean, essentially I have created uh, at one point in time, a cryptocurrency hedge fund that was a little bit on the early side around 2016. Um, and I've also created an automated, essentially a trading robotic hedge fund as well at a previous time and with a, with another business partner. So I've learned to take essentially like in, indicators, algorithms, programmed buy and sells and create software tools for people that can plug into their IRAs, they can plug into their trading accounts, and it trades for them using mm. indicators on some of their favorite companies, Tesla, Google, Apple, Amazon, nothing weird, nothing, nothing crazy, but it buys and sells it goes long, it goes both long and short. But yeah, man, I mean, my main goal, and I know a lot of your listeners are real estate investors, but one of my, my expertise has been liquid markets. And I love real estate, let me be very clear, I'm a pro real estate guy. However, there's nothing better in the market in the world than the stock market for cash flow creation because it's mm -hmm. extremely fast, it's extremely liquid, and the deals are always there. So the deal is the exact opposite of finding, right? That's in real estate, that's the biggest challenge. How do I find the deal? Mm -hmm. Stock market, the deal is always there every single day. It's very easy to find them as well. You just have to have the money and have to know when to get out when the deal doesn't work and when to hold when the deal is working. So I teach people how to look at that take that money they make from active trading. We call it day trading. We call it swing trading. Take that and then go buy real estate or buy um, businesses or any other asset mm -hmm. they can think of. Art, wine, jewelry, bourbon barrels, like me and you were talking about right before we hopped on. So many other things they can buy through a self-directed IRA. I mean, that's a huge game changer, right? Buying real estate, buying yeah. assets through a self-directed IRA. A lot of people have 401ks. A lot of people have retirement funds. They can use and access, and get very liquid with all kinds of sexy, fun things. Man, it's exciting. So give us some of the high level. Maybe you can, maybe this takes longer than 20 minutes, but I mean, you know, on, the, okay. on, the, on, the, on the real estate, I'm sorry, on the stock side, I've never been to stocks. In fact, the closest thing I have is a Vanguard account. I don't even know what they're trading. I just put the money in there and it just lets sure. me know does things each week sure. but like you're talking day trading or swing trading or stock and stock trading give me some of those tells that are like man this is a time to get in all right i got some fun ones for you man so i'm gonna give you two right. let's break it down very very simplistically first of all the stock market is second grade math if you buy a thousand shares of anything and it goes up ten dollars you make ten thousand dollars right that's it that's the simple math 
So if I know that if I can buy something for a thousand shares, if I can risk four dollars, so that's four thousand to make ten thousand, that's a great deal. And Tesla, the company that everyone here knows about, Tesla moves about fifteen dollars a day, every single day, up and down. So you have the ability to take that $10 perspective, right? Have a thousand shares that you purchase. And if it goes up 10, fantastic. If it goes down four or vice versa, you lose out 4,000 and you make 10,000. Very, very popular focus to just have a, this is what I'm looking for. And the reason I'm bringing up Tesla is because they are doing a split. So that just got announced last week. They're doing a three for one split on Tesla, which means right now, if you own, let's say 300 shares, you're about to have three times that many shares at one third the price. Mm -hmm. Here's what's amazing about that. Real estate doesn't split. So if you own a house, it doesn't just turn into three houses overnight. Well, Joe, did you know that you can rent out stock just like you rent out a house and get monthly cash flow from that? Tell me. It's called a covered call. It's very legal. It's very safe. You could do it in an IRA. It's amazing. And the majority of people in the world do not know that that exists. So if you own 100 shares of, let's say, Tesla, for example, knowing they're going to have a split, knowing that people are about to have more shares of it, what are people likely going to do? They're going to be buying it. Stocks run up into their split price all the time, all the time. This is the second time that Tesla is doing a split. The first time it ran up 45% right before the split. This time it's probably going to do a 20, 25% run up. Not only can you rent out your stocks, and bring in rental income monthly or weekly even from a strategy called covered calls, but you can also buy insurance on your stocks as well. And I'll give you a super quick math formula because I know everyone here um, listening does this with real estate. Let's say you buy a house for $100,000 and the house goes up to $200,000 in value. You've doubled your money, great job. But during that process, you also had to pay insurance, right? Just in case something crazy happened. In stocks, you can do the exact same thing. So if I buy Tesla, at, let's just say 700 to make numbers easy, and it goes up to 1,000, I can rent my stock out, bring in income, use that income to buy an insurance contract at 800. Keep in mind, you bought it at 700. So an insurance contract, go, Joe, gives you the right to sell your stock at 800. So what you created is a strategy called a collar, which the crazy thing is it becomes an unlosable trade for a certain period of time. And that example, you would either make 20% or 45%, which is bananas, right? Like that is, in, no one ever has ever used the term unlosable in the stock market ever, but it's a very, very real strategy. Everyone can access it. It's not something that's only designed for people who have hundreds of millions of dollars. Anyone can do it. And that's my mission, man, is to teach all kinds of people how this stuff works because it's so intriguing to me. See, that's pretty interesting to me. I love tangible assets. You know, I like to be able yep. to like walk and park and get in front of my real estate and all that kind of thing. So this is super interesting to me and it's something I've never done. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so in that, in that scenario, curveball, if it goes from 700 to 600, are you covered? Great question. So if you bought it at 700 and as soon as you bought it, it goes straight down to 600 without getting into that Without getting into the collar, no, you're down now $100 a share. Um, now, you can place two different things in that scenario. You can place a trigger or an alert to buy your insurance if it starts going down, just in case. But what's most common is when you get into a trade at the very beginning, you should have a plan, just like with real estate, you should have an exit plan. What am I going to do? What's my thoughts and opinions on this? What's my perspectives? And what, how long am I going to hold this thing? Is this a flip? Is this, am I trying to create generational wealth? Um, am I going to refinance this? What am I doing? So if you buy it at 700, you can go into that perspective with, if it goes down to 600, get me out with something called a stop loss. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, I want you and everyone who's listening to know that this does not mean you have to sit in front of the computer every day. Once you get into a trade, you can truly just walk away, let it do its thing and just kind of hang out. You can have automated orders sitting there ready to implement into your broker if you're not there. So when you're getting into a trade in that previous scenario, if you said, Hey, if it goes up to, you know, 900, get me into, or get, if it goes up from 700 to a thousand, that's $300 a share. And then you get into a collar strategy, buying a put at 800 
that would be a hundred dollar gain. So if you had a stop loss, you bought it at 700, say if it goes down to 600, get me out. That's okay because that would mean that you're risking a hundred bucks a share to potentially make either a hundred dollars or $300 a share. Mm. So it, it does require like, again, good second grade math understanding, but once you practice it, you crush it. And you guys, you guys obviously set this all up at the beginning, right? So when I go to yeah. the side, I'm going to put 10 grand into a thing yep. like it's, it's all set up. And then I just, I wait it out. Correct. Yep. Correct. And you can kind of know ahead of time, like where you're buying something and why you're buying it. Really good example. Um, Netflix. You know, a lot of people listening probably have a Netflix subscription. Well, Netflix was down four weeks ago, uh, 79% from its all-time highs. Essentially, kind of randomly. I mean, we can say random or not. I don't know. But it just had a huge, huge, huge sell-off. And then it pulled down into an institutional level to purchase. Now, the institutional level is um, marked on your screen by a big red line. This red line is called the 200 simple moving average on a monthly chart. I'm not going to get into tons of details, but essentially you can have lines drawn for you on your screen to know where banks, hedge funds, funds like Vanguard are going to be purchasing assets. And those lines can be drawn for you to show you, hey, this is the the average of the last 200 months, this is the average price of Netflix. And banks and institutions love buying at these long-term prices. And if you can see where they are, which takes 25 seconds, maybe, um, you can determine and create ahead of time where you would like to buy certain asset classes. Love it. Love it. What's the software you guys use? Is it proprietary or is it something that people can get access to? No, good question, man. So I actually have all my education for free. Um, I was tired of people giving me the excuse that they don't uh, didn't have the money to learn how to trade stocks. And that was a very, very valid excuse for me uh, when I was 20 and everybody was charging 60 grand for insights mm -hmm. on how to do covered calls and callers, the strategy I've been teaching. I teach it for free, man. And it did piss a lot of people off and I did get sued when I first launched it, which is, I guess, <laughs> if, if you don't get sued once, you're not making money. Um, you're not doing something right. Not doing <laughs> something right, man. But, but with that being said, the access is totally free software. It's called tradingview.com. Mm -hmm. So you can, it's an app you can download. It's on your phone. It's the software on your, on your website, your, your login, your desktop, your laptop, whatever. Tradingview.com, you can go there and you can start practicing. Because for me, and you do this too, man, when you look at your real estate, you 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 run the numbers. You have an Excel sheet probably, mm -hmm. or you have some type of data that you input. That you can visually look at the comps. Is this a good deal? Yeah. Stocks is the same way. Like, did, has it pulled back? Is it at a price where it's literally high or it's really low? A great example right now is Johnson & Johnson. Everyone knows what Johnson Johnson is, right? This is a no-brainer. Johnson Johnson was at 186 uh, back in April. Right now it's 166. Now it's been down to 166 about, looking at the chart right now on another screen actually, it's been down to 166 about 16 times since January of 2021. And it's gone higher after it's gone down to 166. So you're able to look at, am I buying Johnson Johnson at an all-time high or am I buying it at a lower discount where I think it could probably go back up? And mm. you know, Johnson Johnson is also at the 100 simple moving average on a weekly chart, which is again, another one of those institutional levels where the last time it interacted with this price was February of 2022 and it bounced extremely strongly. So just, just an example of being able to look at a company that everyone knows about, everyone here listening uses their products to some degree, and you can be an owner and not just a consumer. Most people are just consumers. They just buy. They buy Netflix, they, they buy apples, they buy Johnson Johnson products, but they never actually have the stock or the company pay them to then go buy the products. So it sounds like, are you, are you, are you processing mostly blue chip stocks? Is this most of the things you're analyzing or do you look at the little stuff too? I, I do, man. I look at little stuff, although not extremely, that's not my specialty. So by small stuff like penny stocks, I, I don't know tons about penny stocks because I don't want to do all the research on what kind of random things they might may or may not be doing. I'll give you a perfect example, man. Um, I did play AMC the other day. Me and one of my buddies, we took a mandate to go see Top Gun. Hadn't seen it yet, mm -hmm. new one. And uh, I was like, all right, let's go see it. Well, when I bought a ticket, the ticket was at an AMC theater. So I said, all right, cool. I'm gonna go buy $1,000 worth of AMC stock. 
Now, this was two and a half weeks ago. It wasn't wasn't that long ago. Granted, this is going to sound made up, but I got really lucky. Um, anyway, so I was like, I'm going to buy $1,000 of AMC stock. It was at 17 bucks at the time I bought it, and I sold it at 26 So I made approximately 40% return, which was $400 on $1,000. I went to that movie for free, man. <laughs> right? I like, I don't, I don't, yeah. I can go to three or four the, other movies. Exactly. I go to three or four other movies. I could donate tickets. I could buy all the popcorn. I could do whatever, but my net gain on AMC is actually positive. That's the way I think. If I'm going to go into Best Buy and buy something, I'm going to buy some of the stock. And hopefully the stock goes up enough where that stock increase can actually help me pay for the thing that I'm just, uh, that I want to purchase. And so, so you I hear this said all the time. You should invest in the things that you invest in when you're out there purchasing. You're doing this in real life. You go and you don't do see a thing, do a thing. You're getting involved in that company. Absolutely, man. Um, Apple, uh, Tesla, Nvidia, uh, yeah, Best Buy, Verizon. So my phone's with Verizon, and I, I pay a bill. And usually, if Verizon goes down to like sub forty, I buy a bunch, you know, four or five thousand dollars worth. And if it goes up to high fifties make a 25% return. I sell it. I pay a Verizon bill with that money and I don't actually pay my Verizon for the next two, three, five months. So I, that's just a process. You, it's a way to think. I think, I think what most people, especially in the trading platforms get stuck with is when do they let go? Mm -hmm. And so are you expecting Verizon? Let's say it goes from 40 to 55. You're expecting one day it'll be 40 again, right? These stocks are doing this. Exactly. Is, is it a consistent? Okay. Exactly. Yeah, precisely, man. Because a lot of people do want to hold on for the absolute legend move. And I would tell people that's a phenomenal way to do something long-term. So you should have long-term investments. You should have stocks that you more or less don't sell. Let's take Apple. Let's take Google. Let's take Tesla. They can, they can go extremely high from here. But that's not cash flow, right? That's long-term investing. And you should certainly do that. I know every real estate investor I've ever talked to said, their, their biggest regret is selling more, selling some of the houses. They wish that they held more long term. Of course. Yeah. They usually do flip, yeah. right? They usually flip them. But in my perspective, it's like, all right, well, I can do uh, so. Most <laughs> flippers make somewhere between 20 and 35%. That's kind of like their, that's their goal. That's the bread and butter they're looking for. I can make that exact same return in stocks in weeks, sometimes even days, just pressing a button. No phone calls, no driving, no contractors, no refunds, no lights, no tenants, no termites, no toilets, no nothing, literally nothing. I need internet and a computer. I can do the exact same returns. Unfortunately, there's no depreciation. There's no real tax benefits. That is why I do absolutely agree that, that real estate is the bomb.com. But people should at least understand or start to dive into stocks just so that they're aware of the power. Love it. Love it. You said before the show, you get into different types of syndication, uh, you're up all the way to syndicating barrels of whiskey. So talk to me about yeah. some of the different crazy syndications you get into outside of stuff. Oh man. Um, that's, that, that's the biggest one. Uh, I have a lot of my assets into that right now and I'll, I'll tell people why. So long story short, essentially we buy full barrels of bourbon from distilleries because what they do, Joe, is like when they make them, they need to, they need the cash flow. So they sell the bourbon mm -hmm. to whoever and yep. that whoever is me and then a hundred million other people. And I'm, I'm just after the crumbs, man, like those, you know, those crumbs, but the crumbs and bourbon is a million dollar crumbs. So I'm trying to buy some crumbs and I store them in a warehouse. I pay my warehouse fees just like everyone else. That's the next step. By the way, is I want to buy a warehouse. I haven't, I don't own one of those. Okay. That'd be really cool. <laughs> okay. But uh, so if you see any warehouse deals, let me know. Um, so I, I saw it in the warehouse and then six months to two years later, that's the kind of the time frame that I'm looking. I start approaching other distilleries saying, Hey, I got 500 barrels of two year or two and a half year age bourbon. Are you thirsty? Are you looking for mm -hmm. some? And they say, yeah, I'll buy a hundred. I sell them. And then they go and pick them up from the warehouse and so on and so forth. But that syndication is available because it's a physical asset, right? It's tangible. Mm -hmm. like me and you can go to Frankfurt. We can go to, wilderness trails we can put our hands on the bourbon that we have in storage and i love that asset for one main reason number one it goes up approximately 16 percent year over year for the last 25 years it's a slightly depressionary and recessionary proof because everyone still drinks no matter the industry and no matter mm -hmm. the matter of the world and number three russia and ukraine those two countries combined are responsible for 45 percent of the world's wheat production 
Well, that got absolutely halted, as you likely know, over the last few months. So there has been no wheat coming out of Russia or Ukraine. And that's going to create some type of supply chain problem two years from now. So I'm trying to buy some of the assets now so that when the prices go up in two years because of the lower supply, I'll be the benefactor of that. I love um, that. Now, do you put together a full PPM and a full syndicated, like, you know, papered up the whole thing? Or are you doing this with like friends and family? Friends and family. So people I talk to, people that I know, I don't go out and uh, because there's no bank financing, number one. So it is all, we're all buying this all cash. So there's no debt. Once we own it, we own it and it just sits there because it doesn't cash flow. So there's no real reason to get into like bank debt, at least for right now. Yeah. But if the numbers work, I'm sure I can make it happen. But yeah, long story short, it's just kind of friends and family for this particular arrangement. Um, the last thing I did with a PPM was uh, a real estate play that was on the larger side that just got had a had structure, new development, uh, really high end resort, and just kind of listed out to again, kind of essentially everybody, like, hey, who wants mm-hmm. to come in? Who wants to buy this? And that was right around the COVID time, but it worked out phenomenal because. Nobody wanted to travel then as we we're building it. Prices were low. And especially if you do anything like this in a tourist place where people go travel, that was a depression on market. Um, that's mm-hmm. like Bali, uh, Indonesia, as an example, got absolutely murdered during COVID. They just opened up two months ago. And so if you're looking at buying land, think about where places and prices are really, really depressed. That's going to be in traveled nations, tra- nations that make most of their money through tourism. Tourism, yeah. So the show is called Legacy Blueprint, right? And obviously you're leaving a hell of a legacy wealth blueprint for your yeah. family, for your future. We love to talk about like favorite fails, favorite hiccups, favorite challenges. I mean, you, you had gone over a couple earlier, you know, getting through to where you were today. Any major roadblocks or obstacles that maybe made you think twice about continuing to push forward, push ahead and, and be where you're at today? Dude, it's so many. <laughs> Um, <laughs> how about this so, week <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Let, let's just talk about exactly let's talk about the last two weeks um the big one of the bigger ones was when i first got started i didn't know about any of this world but i did know about covered calls that was the very first dredge i ever learned buy a stock at 12 rent it out at 15 repeat that process over and over and over i raised four hundred thousand dollars at the age of 20 from random friends and family and i guaranteed them a 36 percent return a year now, Ooh. I didn't take their money and put it in anything. That's one thing I'm very happy about. I just got their login and password and went to go do their trade on their own platform. But I did take that 400000 to $1.2 million and then lost all of it. Uh, <laughs> so Ooh. lost all of it because uh, I didn't learn, didn't know, didn't have the right mindset, didn't study, didn't have mentors. I was just going out wild slinging a cannon at the age of 21, essentially. Uh, and I got into something called options without knowing anything about stop losses or risk protection. And I just over my head. So I did end up paying everybody back, but it learned, uh, I learned a huge lesson and I had to work at it for three or four months, had to borrow some money from some very shady individuals because I end up maxing out credit cards, pulling out all the money out of my 401k, cash advance loans, doing everything I could possibly do to keep fighting back and keep keeping the game essentially. Mm. and because you have two choices man i the way i see it you either quit which is failure or you keep trying to figure it out now when you figure it out that doesn't mean that you have to become a master that doesn't mean that you have to live in this world and you have to do it professionally but what it does mean is you make the valid decision this is either for me or this is not for me i've either mastered myself so therefore i've mastered this market or i haven't and most people don't put in the time they say 95% of people fail in the stock market. I say 95% of people fail at everything. It's not just the stock mm. market. It, it, even, <laughs> as easy as real estate is, Joe, as easy as it is, yeah. like let's be honest, it is. 95% of people fail at that too because they will take their first deal. And the first deal is the one that you're going to lose on, most likely, right? Or you're not going to make a I ton of money on, but that's why you need coaching. That's why you need assistance. But maybe you make a little bit of money or you, you know, tons of stress, but you got to do it. You got to make those mistakes. The only way we learn is we learn through mistakes. And so you have to fail forward. I was just talking about this last week in my mastermind group. There's this old uh, Japanese proverb. It says fall seven, rise eight, right? Fall seven, rise eight. Has, like, so I love that you're, you're sharing a story of where like you, you could have packed it in. You could have yeah. said, fuck it. You could have filed bankruptcy. You could have went and got a job. Like there's a million of other things you could have done 
<clears throat> to avoid number one, <clears throat> fixing the mistake or even ever getting successful at this thing. And like you fought through it. So to me, like that, that's the biggest reward is when all the chips are stacked against you and somehow you find your way out the other side. So I, I love that integrity reward. and I love that commitment. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's that's the biggest reward. That, that's what a, a, too, too few men do is they put themselves out there largely and get absolutely punched in the face and keep crawling forward. Because what you said, man, is fall seven, rise eight, not fall once, stand twice. No, dog, right. the first three are pretty easy. Those other <laughs> yeah, exactly. four, those other four, <laughs> what kind of man are you after those other four mm -hmm. failures, right? Love it, dude. Love it. Absolutely. Jeremy, where can people find your stuff and, uh, you know, catch up with you in the future? So easiest way to track me down is my stock market company called reallifetrading.com. Or you can find me on anywhere on social media, Jeremy Newsom, jeremynewsom.com. My first name is spelled with two R's, J-E-R-R-E-M-Y. My dad's name was Jerry. So it stands for Jerry and me. <laughs> That was that Jerry was and me. I love that it. That was my man. mom's gift. It. Thanks, mom. <laughs> awesome, brother. Well, man, you've added a ton of value today to the show. I appreciate it. I know the guests are going to appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to doing this again soon. Hell yeah, dude. Thank you.